ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. Welcome into the Wednesday, August 14th edition. Check that. It's not August 14th. It's August 15th. I got your days wrong. I've got you fooled, didn't I? Yeah, I got myself fooled too. Welcome in. It is the August 15th edition. The drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the Miller Lite phone lines 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Miller Lite hold true, great taste, only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. You can also find the show on Twitter. I'm at Paul Swan. Also, you can find us on Facebook by searching The Drive with Paul Swan. So what's coming up today on the show? Well, Teddy Klumper is going to join me here in a few minutes. We're going to talk about what's happening with the Big Green. Now, Teddy is one of the key members of what happens at Marshall University because everything that he can do helps benefit the athletic department because he is – trying to generate as much money as possible to help fund scholarships, help with student-athletes going to Marshall University. It's not just a football thing. It's it's all athletes at Marshall University. And the more money that Teddy can bring in and uh, his staff and uh, the people he work with, the less Marshall has to spend directly. So, uh, you know, it's really important. And I just like cashing with Teddy. So we're going to talk to him in a few minutes, uh, talk about paint the Capitol green and, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the NCAA finance report that comes out. USA Today released this a few days ago, and uh, I really haven't jumped into this because I was kind of saving it until I got to talk to Teddy a little bit. But Marshall, by the report USA Today comes out with every year, is 105th overall. 105th overall. And they're not the last team. They're not the worst. They're not the best team either. And the one thing that maybe bothers a lot of herd fans is that Marshall is below several teams in Conference USA. Old Dominion, North Texas, Charlotte, Florida International, Middle Tennessee, Florida Atlantic, UAB, Texas El Paso, all have more money to play with than the Thundering Herd. Old Dominion is uh, definitely spending more. They're, they're definitely spending more. And as a Herd fan, I know that kind of bothers a lot of Marshall fans to know that Marshall's not the top kid. I mean, here's the difference. Old Dominion, over $44 million. And I'm not going to go into every cent, every penny. I'm not going to round it down that much. But over $44 million, and they're 71st in the country in, in revenue. So look at Marshall... Marshall is a little over $30 million, and that's total revenue. Marshall's a little bit over $30 million in total revenue. And expenses are about the same. I won't even get into that. Expenses were a little bit more. And, of course, uh, there's some allocated money as well. And we'll talk to Teddy about that here in a few minutes about this report and some other things happening with Marshall. But it just comes down to this. The more money that Marshall can bring in the better Marshall can be when it comes to spending, funding, student-athletes, of course, got to fund those scholarships. And I will say this, Marshall, for where it's at in Conference USA, has been competitive. Only Western Kentucky, Texas, San Antonio, Southern Miss, and Louisiana Tech bring in less revenue than the Thundering Herd. And the differences aren't that great. I mean, it's important, but it's not that great in the grand scheme of things. Because Texas El Paso, $32 million, almost $33 million they have in total revenue. UAB is almost at $35 million. Florida Atlantic is over $35 million. Middle Tennessee is over $35 million. Florida International, over $35 million. Charlotte is almost at $38 million. North Texas is at $38 million. And then Old Dominion, they're at $44 million. So there is a difference between Marshall and Old Dominion, and there is a difference between Marshall and North Texas and Charlotte. And it starts to become negligible as you get into the middle of Conference USA. So 
is it fair to say Marshall is just about average? Is that fair to say? Sure, you want them to spend more, but they got to bring in more. And to be honest, I think they do well with what... The, and I'm not trying to justify less is more. I'm not trying to justify that at all. I'm, I'm just saying for what they bring in, for what they're able to bring on the books, I think they do a pretty good job for what they bring in. And so that's why I like to get a guy like Teddy to come in now and then just talk about how important it is to fundraise, how important it is to be out, how important is that big green membership. What does that really mean? Because ultimately I've always had the mindset that if you want nice things, you've got to pay for it. If you want this, this is what it costs. Plain and simple. This is what it costs to do this. You want a nice baseball park? It's going to cost. You want nice football facility? It's going to cost. Now, where Teddy comes in with the big green is they're paying for the scholarships as much as they possibly can to help offset the cost because this is still for student athletes. There's a student part first in the student athlete line. And you want to make sure these kids can get an education and get everything they need to take advantage of being at Marshall, take advantage of the education. And so when you see reports like this, I mean, it could be worse. It really could be worse. You could be a lot lower. Nobody is going to outspend Texas. Just nobody's going to do it. Nobody's going to do it because Texas is massive. Texas A&M will be close. Ohio State will be close. Michigan, Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma. These are massive programs. Florida State, Penn State. I mean, these are massive programs. And you get down to schools that just aren't spending as much or can't bring in the revenue. Go past Marshall. Let's see. You know, Western Kentucky, Texas, San Antonio, right there. Um a lot of these are MAC teams, A10, Missouri Valley Summit, um, Southern Eastern, yeah, East Tennessee State, ETSU is uh, got 24 million plus in revenue. Um, Louisiana Tech is pretty low here. Uh, I mean, you go down the list, you go down further and further and further, and you don't see schools that are in the Power Five. You don't see them down here. Not where I'm I'm looking at right now, and. A lot of these conferences are basketball only as well. Keep that in mind. This is not just a football metric. This is a basketball metric as well. This is an all sports metric. And you have to look at these critically. And you look at these these total revenues. Marshall's ahead of the curve in so many ways because it seems like thirty million plus is the magic number for a lot of programs. I mean, look at I'm just Eastern Illinois, for example, $10 million revenue. You've got Arkansas Little Rock, $12 million revenue. Radford, $12 million. Yeah, no, apples and oranges here. Northern Kentucky, $13 million in, in revenue. Um, but they're also getting a lot of that uh, allocated to them. Teddy Klumper, my guest the president of the Baker Mayfield Fan Club, when we continue with today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented this hour by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Paul Swan, your host here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. And now joining us on the program, uh, I kid around. I, I tell everyone he's the president of the Baker Mayfield Fan Club, but he's really got a more important title. He is the assistant athletic director for development at Marshall University. Teddy Klumper joins us now, and uh, he's got a lot to be excited about. Not just the, well, not just the Browns. You've got Marshall football, your your primary love and passion, and you got a lot of events coming up, and football season's just around the corner. So you got a busy office going on, and you're shorthanded as well. I hear. 
Yeah, we are. And uh, <laughs> for those that uh, don't know, our fearless leader, John Sutherland, took a spill and broke his hip. So anyone out there that knows John that didn't know that, you could shoot him a well wishes. I know he would appreciate that because I know those walls are closing in <clears throat> on him being 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 down. But he'll be back. He'll be back strong, and we're we're ready. Like I said, we're ready for not only the football season. We're ready for all of our all of our sports, all of our fall sports, and, and then before you know it, basketball is going to be around the corner. Yeah, you've got some big events as well. Not only with the football and basketball, but uh, just general fundraising as well. And uh, the one that's coming up that uh, we always like to talk about is paint the Capitol green. This is an opportunity for you, your staff, Marshall, basically to put on its best face, be seen, visit with people, fans, supporters, lawmakers in the capital city. How important is this event? Uh, you've done it for several years now. Have you seen a real tangible impact from this event? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, Charleston, the, 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 the Kanawha and Putnam counties, it's, you know, all, all the counties in the state of West Virginia are obviously, you know, an area, areas that we try to target. But Charleston is, is deep and rich with, with Marshall ties and Marshall alumni and uh, our ability to go to the capital city uh, and show off our student athletes, our coaches, <clears throat> excuse me, our director of athletics. And it's, it's a great way to kick off the football season with kind of a state of martial athletics, uh, you know, uh, overview. And, you know, of course our president is there and it's, it's an event that we've, that that's well, but preceded me. And in the nine, 10 years I've been here, it's, it's, it just gets bigger and better. Sort of helps put a face on the university to lawmakers who, I mean, there's a diverse background and lawmakers uh, in the state that go to different institutions, not just West Virginia, several institutions, across the state. So this gives you an opportunity to, to put a best foot forward and, and be seen and, and maybe remind folks in the capital city that, yeah, hey, Marshall's here too. I mean, it's just like advertising. The more you see a message, the more you see, you know, something, you know, you're, you're, you're more apt to be around it and apt to be involved in it. And, and, uh, you know, we'd love to, you know, take advantage of and, and cater to the, our donors and, you know, the Canal and Putnam County area, but sell some tickets. We've got an exciting football team that uh, I know that Coach Holiday is going to put on, going to put on the field. And uh, it's a great, it's a great time to get on board. Um, and again, getting out there and, and, and pushing our brand and showing folks what we have is, 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 is good stuff. I know there are some limited tickets remaining. I was talking to the group that uh, puts that on uh, the, uh, it's kind of a, it's obviously sponsored by the Big Green, but specifically the Charleston Quarterback Club, which is under the umbrella of the Big Green. Uh, Michael Hill, Chris Lambert, David Rains, Shannon Metz, uh, you know, that, that group up there does a lion's share job. But they told us that they had never sold this many tables in the past. So, uh, again, tickets are limited, but, you know, call the Big Green. We'll always make it work. Anyone that wants to come in and see the herd, it's at the Embassy Suites there. And I think the doors open at 530 next Thursday, the 22nd. Is that your, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but is that your most passionate group? They seem to be the big green group that you hear a lot about. They've got good PR. They seem to be flying around the ball, uh, you know, to use a football term. They're everywhere, and they do a great job. You know, our, we, I think it would be unfair, uh, and I would probably get in trouble too, if, if I had to single out a certain group uh, of booster clubs that leads, I mean, are they actively involved? Absolutely. Do they raise a ton of money for our football program? Absolutely. But three days later uh, on the 24th, excuse me, two days later on the 24th, Mark George, Randy Dunphy, Terry Chapman, and that group down here for the Huntington Quarterback Club will put on the reverse raffle. Uh, and I know that there are probably only, le- I know there are a handful of tickets. I'm going to say less than six that are available, sold out by over 500 tickets in that big drum, but giving folks allowed to, win their money back. And, and when you take in the Valentine's day dance that happens in February, these two events paint the capital and reverse raffle. That's what really drives a lot of funding for our football team. But again, we, we just came off a very successful women's basketball golf outing, Mark Tolliver and that group that, that helps raise funds. And then basketball is going to have some exciting events. I can kind of tease for those, for those around don't make new year's Eve plans. Uh, we're going to try to bring back the event we had for, for basketball. Uh, and there'll be more coming out on that here shortly. Teddy Klumper is our guest. He is the Assistant Athletic Director for Development at Marshall University, and 
you got a lot of events. We've just scratched the surface, really, because even with the start of the athletic season, you don't stop. You haven't stopped. Uh, you really don't get an off season, unlike, say, maybe a few of the student athletes get a few weeks off. I don't think that's the case for you. Well, we will have, you know, obviously we'll have coaches, or excuse me, we'll have quarterback club luncheons uh, where folks in Charleston can see Coach Holiday. Those are usually the Mondays of game week, and then the folks in Huntington can, can listen to Doc on Thursday. Um, and those are, are, again, during the home game week. The best thing for folks to do is just to continue to <clears throat> check our website. We We pump those out, our social media. You know, if there are any last minute changes, but where, you know, certain things are and, and, and what times they start. But, you know, a lot of the, uh, uh, I think the first couple lunches in Charleston are at Embassy Suites. The first couple lunches here in Huntington, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, Thursdays in Huntington, those are over at Fat Patties. Uh, we've got, you know, heard golf days coming up that, uh, in October, our endowment dinner in October, baseball. We're going to have uh, some exciting, continued, exciting news on baseball. I'll kind of continue to tease that. Uh, we'll have the, a lot of the uh, folks back that are involved with baseball alumni uh, as we get into homecoming. And then again, like I said, basketball comes and would be remiss if I didn't mention my good friends, Ted Wilson and Mike Stapleton, and they've peppered the community, putting together money for the Latterman Golf Tournament, you know, obviously uh, in honor of Mo Latterman and, and the, the money that they raised that tournament they have, they have put in an endowment and how they've grown that endowment in such a short time. Uh, has is is really fruitful, and that obviously continues to has a spiral effect and benefits all of our student athletes. Teddy Klumper is our guest. He is the assistant athletic director for development at Marshall University. Now, Teddy, uh, every year USA Today comes out with one of the most comprehensive looks at NCAA finances, and they put it online on their website in easy to read form. You can search by school, you can search by total expense, total revenue, conference. You've got so many ways to look at this, and Marshall could do better. Marshall's not the bottom, but Marshall's definitely not close to the top, or at least where the Thundering Herd would like to be. When you see these numbers, you see the uphill battle you have sometimes. How important is it to just maybe get the word out to fans, alumni, supporters that these numbers don't change unless you get a lot of feedback from donors. You get a lot of help. Really, boosters are what help this program thrive. You know, I've had a discussion many a times, and I think it's kind of one of the things I go onto a soapbox about. And we've we've tried, you know, short of of hiring some sort of supersonic experts in the period of of advertising and marketing. The this, this this idea that you have to give big money to be a booster for Marshall Athletics. And that could not be further from the truth. $60 annually, $5 a month, is all it takes for a person to support Marshall Athletics and our student athletes. $60 annually. And, you know, people don't realize the more money that the Big Green raises, which ultimately is our responsibility, is the less money you know, that the, the athletic department has to transfer to help cover scholarships. I mean, it's, it's quite simply, the more money raised for scholarships, the more money that, you know, goes back into the athletic department's budget. But, you know, you know, would we like to be self-sustaining like some of the schools are? Of course. You know, are we working every day to make sure that we get to that? Of course. You know, are we never satisfied? No. And I know that all those are coach speaks and sounds, you know, pie in the sky kind of attitude, but we really, we really do. You know, we, we have, we we we've done a lot of cool things, and we're you know I, th- I know you and I Paul have talked about the drive for 35 and trying to you know get the 3,500 members, and I, I believe that we'll get there this year. That'll make two. That'll make if if we win, we get to 3,500 members. That will be the second time we've eclipsed that kind of milestone. But you know we're going to need 4,000. We're going to need 5,000, and I think that the you know more folks that we're able to get into the big green become members again allows more money on the back end to do other things. And what we've done here with what we have, I think is nothing short of amazing. Teddy Klumper is our guest. He is the assistant athletic director for development. And you look at some of these numbers and it's just amazing how astronomical some of them are. And I look at Texas, for example, how do they spend so much money? I mean, 
how, and I know why, I know how it happened, so, but still, it's just so astronomical. And Marshall, for what Marshall's been able to bring in revenue-wise, has been pretty competitive with the upper echelons of college football. And it's not just college football, it's you know, athletics, period. Marshall has been competitive for what Marshall's able to do financially. And, you know, you, you don't like a moral victory, but you got to be pretty happy with the fact that Marshall's doing pretty good. It could always do better, but it's not all doom and gloom. I think that's a testament to those that currently help us. You know, it, it is a testament to all the current bakery members and the boosters and, and, and the companies that work with us that buy tickets, you know, buying, buying a ticket, joining the big green, that's the easiest way to support Marshall athletics. And there are folks again, that go far and above and do that, you know, starting to single, the single folks like that out would really get me in trouble, you know, because you never want to miss anyone. But, you know, yeah, I, I, again, I look at, um, you know, what Mr. Hamrick says all the time, you know, we've, we've been able to improve our facilities, whether that's building new or, you know, changes, uh, changes to, um, I'm at a loss for words there for a minute. Remodeling, that's, that's, that's not the right word, but you know what I mean. Facility enhancements, thank you. The, the new facilities and facility enhancements, what we've been able to do to the tune of $40 million you know, in the last 10 years, that's because, and I think anyone who's been around Coach Holiday will tell you that kids buy with their eyes. There's that, that indoor facility over there. Not only does it do so much for the community and all of the track meets and high school archeries and you name it, it's been in there. But what it does for our recruiting and it does, you know, to make us competitive is really something special. Joining us on the program, Teddy Klumper. He is the assistant athletic director for development. And you bring up a lot of good points, just $60 to join the big green. And um, you get so many perks with that. And there are higher perks for higher levels of donation, but really for the majority of the perks, at sixty dollar level, I think uh, when you restructured the points years and years ago, uh, it seemed to be a fair way to to get as many people on board as possible. And you don't even have to give the sixty dollar level. I mean, you're you're not going to turn away fifty dollars. You're not going to turn away five dollars a month. And really, I don't think people realize that if you do want to donate, you don't just pay it all up front. Yeah, we try to be as flexible as we can. You know, I think that was something that from an annual fund perspective that, you know, when John and I got here, that was the first thing that we tackled was let's make it flexible for folks to pay, whether it's over a 12-month period, quarterly, biannually. I mean, you you know, we've had folks come up with, you know, all kinds of different ways to do it. We may drive our business manager nuts, but we but we do it and we get by with it. You know, again, if you take the herd, you know, just the $60 membership, what you the 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 savings and the coupons and the incentives and the discounts that you get through our herd perks program if you go on that on our website herdzone.com search herd perks big, under the big green giving tab if you add all those discounts up it probably far ex- I know it I know it exceeds 60 I bet it almost doubles you know to 120 and then folks that give 120 dollars get the nice thundering herd illustrated that comes out you know, throughout the year. And then anything after that, you're just aligning your giving with your seating. You know, X amount of seats requires X amount, you know, of a contribution per seat, so on and so forth. So again, the, the, the misconception that you have to give that the big green is only interested in millions of dollars and hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars is completely false. More $60 members we have, the better we're going to be in the, in the long run. Fact. And I've rarely ever seen a situation where someone who gives at the $60 level isn't treated. I don't think I've ever seen it, really. I mean, you remember the Big Green. Uh, everybody's treated the same. I, I know, um, you know you try to make everybody feel like they're a part of the herd. And, uh, I mean, that's why you even have the hashtag herd family, because uh, that's really something you're stressing. It is. You know, we, we're we not, all, I tell folks all the time, we don't always get it right. I know I don't always get it right. You know, I'm, I've had my fair share of, you know, mistakes and I fumbled the football, pardon the pun, but, you know, what we do is not only do we have a, an excellent reputation of, of fixing things, but if, when, when, you know, if we do make a mistake, we'll fix it. And, you know, as far as treating donors, I, 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 I tell people all the time, whether you give 60 or 6 million, you know, you're, you're, you play an important role. Everybody has a role. Um, and, you know, our hashtag herd family is not just something that we throw out there. It is. We try to make everyone feel 
You know, like this is a family atmosphere. I tell this story, and it's not as much as it applies to donors, but the folks that have worked here, you know, that have been involved, at, you know, in different capacities within the athletic department, they will tell me they go different places and they said, I don't know what it is, but there's something different about that place. And they always end up missing it. Are, are they doing great? The new jobs? Absolutely. But they're always a part of this, the fabric here. And that's where I think that's one of the, re- you know, things behind the herd family hashtag. Teddy Klumper, my guest, he is the assistant athletic director of development and Six days a week during NFL football season. Uh, I love the guy. You know, on Sundays, not so much. But, um, I mean, and I'm probably not going to like you as you know. I'm probably going to hate you a little bit more. Come a few times this Sunday. Well, they've got the Browns have got to pay, play to the expectations that have been put out there. But if I have to imagine that they're going to be pretty fun to watch. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm um, AJ Green's um, injured. Yeah, you know, Bengals are off to a rousing start. Well, I know you'll. I'll, I know we'll probably lose some big green members when I say this. And then Andy Dalton was going to be Andy Dalton. So, yeah, Dalton's going to Dalton. No, no, you're, you're just speaking the truth. Dalton is going to Dalton. And of course, we have that game for you coming up tonight, right here on ESPN ninety four point one FM and AM nine thirty. And the Clipper. Indians appreciate Puig from the Reds. Man, I'm I'm over baseball. I'm done. <laughs> I'm over. I'm done. I'm just done. Tribe's not done though. No, the tribe's not done, but I'm I'm just done. Baseball, I'm done. I'm moving on. Herd football, Bengals football, I'm done. Herd herd soccer, you know, moving on to all the herd sports and and the Bengals. Well, both of our soccer teams are going to be fun to watch, and I think they start Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, everything's coming up. Uh, so looking forward yep. to that. So uh, they get everything started, and um, we'll um. We'll have a lot to talk about, I'm sure, over the next few weeks. Uh, not only herd football, herd athletics, and uh, Bengals Browns football, but uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll talk during that game for sure. Yeah, you, know, you can come on and co-host the show, maybe even. That sounds great. You know, I think a lot of I think a lot of folks will have not, you know, I think they're going to be so excited when they start seeing uh, the you know the construction of the baseball field and it's, the fact that it's on the horizon along with the. Um, Re- reconstruction renovations of Gullickson Hall for an indoor practice facility for basketball, men's and women's basketball, as well as you know increasing our endowment and the uh, an, the uh, an erection of a statue of Hal Greer, something that you know is long overdue for what top fifty NBA player of all time, and you know certainly carries uh, the flag of you know Marshall Athletics, Marshall Basketball. Teddy Klumper, Assistant Athletic Director for Development at Marshall University. Good talking to you. And uh, next time when you come on the program, let's talk about the the push to get hockey at Marshall. All right, that, that's all right. happening, right? We're making that happen. I mean, with all these facilities, I'm just putting, I'm just putting the word out there now. It's uh, that, dropping seed. That's what I need from you. I, I really need hockey at Marshall. You know, I can't skate at all. Never have been able to. <laughs> No, I'm gonna. Keep, I'm just gonna float that randomly now and then until one day uh, somebody says, "Hey, that's a great idea. Let's make that happen." And here's the check to do it. I'm just gonna. Right. I'm just gonna keep floating that, Teddy. There you go. <laughs> that's the only way it's gonna happen. It's gonna be a really big check too. Okay. Yeah. Um. What if I started a, a fund? I mean, if I can't get it funded, I'll just give you the money. I mean, there you go. Yeah, that I wins. love it. Okay, we'll we'll work on that. The uh, the big green hockey fund, and you know, maybe I'll, I'll just get hockey fans to give me money, and then we'll put it to the big green. Uh, that that's that's my fall project, Eddie. Whatever makes you happy, Paul. <laughs> Bengals football coming up tonight. Yeah. Browns losing. Those are the things that make me happy, and uh, Teddy Klumper makes me happy from the uh, Marshall University Athletic Department Director for Development. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Paul. More on the way. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're presented this hour by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Paul Swan, your host. It is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Went off to a rocky start. Uh, August fifteenth edition. You're listening to the show earlier. Uh, I'm going to give it away. I thought it was uh, August fourteenth. I have thus corrected myself, and uh, I am now in the present, not the past. So uh, it's the Thursday edition. 
That means we've got uh, one day left to go with the Friday edition, and we're then just a couple weekends away from herd football. So uh, I was shortchanging us. We are getting that much closer to herd football, and there's lots of expectations. Expectations are high. Uh, AP came out with a story today uh, talking about uh, teams you got to keep an eye out for with the group of five. And, of course, UCF is always going to be on that list. But uh, here's what the list looks like, really. UCF. Then you've got, uh, from the Sun Belt, Appalachian State. Boise State from Mountain West. You have, from the American Cincinnati, you have, of course, as we mentioned, UCF, Central Florida. Uh, you have Mid-American Ohio on the list. That's right. you got to watch out for them. They're going to be a team. And making the list from Conference USA, Marshall. Here's what they said in the AP story. They said that Marshall returns nine starters on offense from a team that went 9-4 and four and won the Gasparilla Bowl last season. Marshall brings back quarterback Isaiah Green, four starters on the offensive line, and its two top rushers from last season. Channing Hames and Omari Cobb lead a defense that didn't allow any individual to rush for 100 yards last season. North Texas is another Conference USA team that bears watching. So they do mention them, but Marshall is the team from Conference USA that makes the list. But as we mentioned, so does Cincinnati, so does Ohio, and so does Boise State. I bring that up because Boise State's on Marshall's schedule. Cincinnati is on Marshall's schedule. Ohio, you know them. Yep, they're going to be good this year. Here's what they said about uh, Ohio. Uh, said that the I'm just going to paraphrase. They haven't won a MAC title since 1968, but they're the favorite to win the league. They won bowl games last couple of seasons. Mentioned their nine and four record. Uh, Nathan Rourke talked about how well he played and uh, the Frisco Bowl victory over San Diego State. So. If Marshall can beat Cincinnati, if Marshall can beat Ohio, and if Marshall can beat Boise State and then take care of business in Conference USA, well, I'm not saying Access Bowl. I'm not saying Access Bowl. But you got to take care of your business. They could be in the hunt. So all of a sudden, if I'm Dave Walsh, the former Young Thundering Herd quarterback who uh, joins me on Mondays and various other days on this program, uh, as his schedule permits, all of a sudden, I'm I'm Dave Walsh, and I'm sitting here thinking, um, yo, Swan, I told you, Boise State Marshall, big deal. That's going to have implications. Big deal. Yeah, he, he's kind of onto something there. But Cincinnati, Ohio, what if you got that threesome, get that hat trick, you beat those three, and then you go in the conference 4-0, 4-0 in the conference, and then you just get Go through conference and win the games that you're supposed to. Get to the championship game. Win the East Division. Get to the championship game. And you win that. Then we're looking at a situation where all of a sudden, Marshall is really in the conversation. They have to be. But you got to be undefeated. But now the resume is, is there. The resume is solid with these teams, if these teams live up to their expectations, and that's the other thing, Boise State's got to live up to Boise State expectations. Ohio has got to go win the MAC. Cincinnati has got to be a disruptive force in the American. So if you get, what if, say, Marshall beat the Mountain West champion, the American Athletic champion, and the Mid-American Conference champion? What if Marshall beat those three teams? Those three teams that could end up champion of their league. And then Marshall's the champion of Conference USA. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means Marshall should be, I'm not saying a shoe in, but Marshall should definitely be a team that should keep an eye out for. And of course, you know, Appalachian State out of the Sun Belt, they're going to be tough as well. I can't wait to see Marshall play them again. But this is this year, so we're focusing on Boise, Cincinnati, and Ohio. But that just dawned on me that um, sometimes the herd got a little grief over this schedule. But you look at it, all right, it sets up. It's, it's, it's doable. It sets up to be competitive. It's doable. Uh, Boise State, herd fans will get to if they want to go. 
Cincinnati and Ohio, of course, make sense from a geographic standpoint. Make perfect sense, right? I think so. And with the Thundering Herd playing VMI as a sort of a, a warm-up, a loosen up everything, see what's working, get the motor running, you know, test drive, take take this thing out. Get some get some players uh, some playing time, maybe go out, dominate in the first half, and then put some guys in that maybe won't get as much time in the second half. I know that's all wishful thinking. That's not disrespecting VMI, but if, if Marshall is working on all cylinders or if Marshall's living up to potential, then Marshall should win that game easily. Let's be honest. Let's be fair. That's a tune-up. That's a, that's a game you schedule to have a home game. It's a game that should interest the fans enough. I mean, the old-time herd fans, Southern Conference days, you remember VMI. You should have some fondness for them. But it's also your opener. It's your home opener. So it really doesn't matter the opponent because you've just been waiting for herd football. At this point, you're playing anybody, and you're showing up. If you want to see herd, I'm, how, how many of you are sitting there going, well, I would like to go to the herd game, but VMI. You're not saying that, are you? If you are, what's what's wrong with you? It's the home opener. So that's the list. Appalachian State, though, not on the uh, on the schedule. What what if Appalachian State and Marshall ran the table? Who's got the better resume? Who's got the better resume? Well, I mean, they're they're rolling through the Sun Belt right now. So they're rolling the Sun Belt. If Marshall rolls Conference USA and in the process beats the Mountain West potential champion, a potential Mid-American Conference champion, and a potential American Athletic champion. But all these things have to fall into place. I know that's a lot of expectations here. And we can talk about this right now because everybody's undefeated. Nobody's lost yet. We can go down this road. So hope that Cincinnati, Ohio, and Boise State win their conference. Marshall rolls through the East and beats all of those teams, and Marshall wins the Conference USA Championship game. Access Bowl, right? There you go. I've just put together the game plan. No problem. It can be done if you just follow my plan. The plan will work. More on the way. It's The Drive. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Don't forget if you missed any part of the program today, all you have to do is go find the show on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And we're on Stitcher Radio too, right? Google Podcasts, we're on all of those, but... If you missed any part of the program, you can go find the show on your favorite podcast catcher. Start with Spotify, start with Apple Podcasts, and of course you can go and listen to today's episode later this evening on the website at wrvc.com. And that'll take you to the player there, and we post the show every day, almost without fail. Almost, I say. There have been days, and I do apologize for that. So, Thundering Herd getting closer and closer to the start uh, football season, as we just outlined, Marshall's schedule potentially, and that word is not a good word around Doc Holiday, but potentially could be uh, an excellent schedule if you have the teams that are favored to win their conference, actually win their conference, and Marshall beats those teams. I mean, it sets up pretty nicely. It, it really does. It sets up pretty nicely for the Thundering Herd. So there's more happening today, not just football, not just big green activities. We've got a couple of things we want to talk about before we call it a day. And uh, let's go with Marshall Volleyball. Marshall Volleyball redshirt junior Sierra DeBell, named to the 2019 Conference USA preseason team. And these are voted by the conference coaches. So the coaches are the ones who see the players the most. They, they remember, they see and uh, she makes the all-conference team, preseason team. So if you look at their numbers, 10 or more kills in 22 of 28 matches, including 20 or more five times. In the Moorhead State win last season, she had 32 kills, tied for eighth most in program history, 
first herd player to reach 30 kills in a match since Elizabeth Herman in 2010. She had 26 kills in a season-high, 23 digs in a victory over IUPUI. She also had back-to-back 20-kill performances in Conference USA action with 27 against UTEP and 28 with eventual lead champion Rice. And you've got a team that has some serious potential because they've got 10 players coming back, five newcomers. The green and white scrimmage, August 24th at the Cam Henderson Center. And then August 30th, the season officially gets underway against UT Martin. But scrimmage 24th in the Cam Henderson Center. Get a chance to go see what the volleyball team is all about. Ari Agnes has uh, really got me excited for uh, volleyball. She has uh, come in and really, I think, taken pride and ownership in the team immediately. And she has come in and put her own spin, as every coach should do, come in and put their own spin. And she's got a lot of energy. I think she's going to do quite nicely for Marshall. And you got to admit, the, the Olympic sports are doing a lot better. Volleyball is one of those sports where if you get everything in the right place, uh, could go out and win a conference championship. Softball, if you get everything in the right place, could go out and win a conference championship. And, of course, soccer, you're, you're hoping that everything starts to fall in place and break through for them. It's a little tougher in soccer, though. The, the league is actually pretty good. So when you see, say, like Marshall picked fourth in men's soccer, you got to think to yourself, okay, that's not bad because two of the three teams ahead of the herd in Conference USA are, are nationally ranked. Goes back to what we were talking about earlier. If you missed the program, when I was talking to Teddy Clumper, that Marshall, for the revenue it can bring in and what it can spend on athletics, uh, can field some competitive teams. And I know there was that talk earlier that Marshall should make a play for the American. And I understand why, because you look at the revenues and you think to yourself, this is where the money is. This is where the money is. Uh, Connecticut, $79 million total revenue. Uh, Central Florida, $61 million total revenue. Cincinnati, $61 million total revenue. Yeah, that's a bump, isn't it? That's a big bump from what Marshall has uh, been able to bring in. But the bottom team in the ACC, or I'm sorry, the AAC, my mistake. The bottom team, and by the way, the ACC is uh, North Carolina with $87 million. The bottom team, looking at the spreadsheet right now, and the AAC is South Florida with $45 million. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We are presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.